What's up guys, Tevin here, back again with a brand new playthrough for you guys. This time I'm actually doing something a little different than what I normally do. And instead of actually doing like a normal first game in a series, this time around I'm actually going to be playing a brand new game that came out probably like, I think about a month ago now, but by the time this is going up. And that's going to be Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. So, I normally don't like to do games when they first come out, just because they tend to be oversaturated on YouTube, but... My nephew kept on insisting that I do play more new games, so for this once, this one time, I am going to give in to that and I'm going to play a brand new game just because this has been on my mind for like the past few weeks that I've had it and I've just been in love with the game. So make it be a bit more comfortable that I can actually start playing the first three again because I was terrible at doing those ones. So now I'm going to give this one a chance. So this is Activision and made by Toys for Bob, just like the... Um, insane trilogy, so hopefully once I do this one, I will give those ones a try later on though. They're not gonna be like right back to back. Cause otherwise I wouldn't be doing this one then. So anyway, without further ado, made by Shanghai Studio for the Activision, uh, Activision Division. Using the Unreal Engine, got Crash Bandicoot 4, and of course this one saves automatically. It's not quite the same as the past three games. This one's actually a bit more modernized and I actually really like that. Go and, start, go and accept the agreement, blah, 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 all this legal stuff I don't care about. Accept more legal stuff I don't care about. Skip, 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 skip. Okay. I'm gonna go and do a new game. And I am going to do my normal Tev. So T, E, and let's go for that V. There we go. And so you get two different type of play styles, modern one, when you die you always continue from the last checkpoint, just highly recommended. Or you can be a psycho and play how they did back in the old day in the retro version where you had limited rise, ah, lives. If you run out you must restart the level. I'm not doing that. I am more comfortable playing the modern way and I really hope honestly they have a patch for the other two games that lets them do that. And of course I'm actually playing on my second account for this so it won't be my real one. So. Without further ado, as always, I'm going to be quiet during cutscenes, so let's go ahead and get started with A Rude Awakening. Crash Bandicoot. At last, I, the great Neocortex, have you right where I want you. And now, the final blow! <laughs> <laughs> Face it, Entropy. It's going to fail. Again! At least Uka Uka and I attempt to free us from this prison. I won't sit idly by and listen to your inane ramblings for another decade. You chew. Is he dead? Leave him. He served his purpose. <laughs> A great power has awoken. Crash? I fear it portends an event of reality-shattering proportions. I feel it emanating from insanity peak. Quickly, we must go! Crash! 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 <laughs> Alright, so we're finally in control of Crash again. So, first thing right off the bat, what you can do is actually spin on this TV, and you can actually see the intros to the first three games, and then the final one will give you the fourth one. And this actually gets you a trophy. Surprisingly, back over here too, there's a little Spyro the Dragon cameo. Spin that out of the way. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So this isn't going to be a 100% run. For the most part, I do know where a majority of the stuff is, um, where I'm at right now in my current like personal playthrough. So I will try, I'm definitely going to get all the colored gems because I know how to get those this time around. But in terms of like trying to get every single gem, that might be a bit above what I'm capable of. Let's go ahead and make our way through here. Break as many boxes as I can. 
So in this game too, you're also able to collect gem. Well, I don't know so why in this game. In other games, you're able to collect gems too, but this time around, when you do it, it actually gives you uh, skins and whatnot you can actually equip onto your character. They don't really do anything. They're just solely for cosmetics. And of course, you get Aku Aku boxes which shield you from damage where you get hit. I'm going to try to avoid having to need all those, but for the most part, it's going to be like a pretty simple play. Did I get hit by something? I think it was probably the acid from the spider. Nope. Thankfully, I got him out the way. You can double jump with XX, spinning with a triangle, and you can actually do a slide with circle button. And it's mostly just using all these skills together when I'm in conjunction to actually get through platforming and whatnot. Which I don't feel is as difficult as in this game compared to the other ones. But that might just be me. Anyway, now we are rail sliding again. Let's go ahead and keep on the lookout for these boxes as well as collecting Wampa Fruit. Because those are going to be important too. Break all these boxes. Don't forget this one. And just two more. So by collecting oh, I really missed that one. Alright, that's that's perfect. I I enjoy having to replay levels. You know what? No, it's not a big deal in this one. <laughs> Because like I said, it's not supposed to be 100%. So, I won't die if, if I don't get a gem or two. Ooh, that was close. Let's just keep on making our way all the way up to Insanity Peak so we can see what's going on that has Aku Aku. So, press, oh, let me actually go on this so we can actually go to a bonus level. Because you want to get these two in case you want to try to go for 100% and collect all the crates and whatnot. And they will get progressively harder as things progress. So keep that in mind. Ooh, no. I don't know why I didn't break this first. No, I'm trying to box over it. Oh, if you press circle while you're in there, you do a little ground pound. And if you slide and then jump, you get a little bit more draw distance in it that can help with your platforming. Anyway, I'm probably not going to get 100% in the crates because I did miss the one on the rail towards the very end. And right now, we have two Aku Aku masks right now, so he's glowing gold. And if we get one more, we'll be invincible for a little bit. So let's just keep on going. And, ooh, things are really picking up back in Insanity Peak. So we're almost there. So let's go ahead and keep going. Ooh, good. I almost thought I messed up my jump there. And I will try to show you guys all the costumes towards the end of the playthrough. They're not going to be so heavily in the main one just because that's not the main goal. And I will show that on my like official account where I actually do put effort into doing these. Nope. Almost jumped too soon. Gotta be wary of my timing. Oh, I got hit there. And I got hit a second time. That was sloppy. But you know what? We're close towards the end, so it's not that big of a deal if I take a few hits here or there. As long as I can maintain my no death run. For right now, this first area is easy to do for in some levels once you do practice on it. And of course, I missed two boxes. Oh, interesting. But anyway, that's the rude awakening. We got invincible for not dying in the first level. So here you can see we can unlock skins with the gems. They're all pretty cool from what I've seen for the most part. And we unlock time trials once you beat a level. And so these are the six requirements you have to do in order to collect all the gems for the, each individual level. And some levels you won't be able to collect all the crates until you get some of the colored gems, which we are actually coming up to get our first one of when we go to Insanity Peak. So I'll be pointing out how we go about getting that once we get closer to that actual one. <laughs> Expect a lot of deaths. More than I would care to admit. All right, so Insanity Peak. Let's go ahead and collect this Wampa Crate over here. Gold Wampa Ones gives us 25 extra ones. And we want to go on here to keep going through. Got a checkpoint. Where are these guys? Thankfully got Aku, so I have a bit of protection in case I were to get hit and mess up my jump. And I would be wary about breaking crates. If you see some that are stacked, I would like take it easy and see if there's anything on top that you might want to like get to get the 100%. I actually want to come back here to get all these Wampa Fruit first. And then come back down and swing across. That way I can make sure I'm actually getting as much of the fruit as I can. 
TNT crates, don't spin into them. Just jump on their tops and they will explode by themselves and destroy any, quates ne ah, any crates nearby. Checkpoint. Let's keep on heading. Ooh. Not to mess myself up there. Slightly here. Dodge you. Alright, so we got some disappearing platforms now. But first, let's go to this other bonus level over here. I don't know if I'm going to keep on doing the bonus levels. They're important, but I feel like if I try to keep going on them the whole time, I'm going to mess up eventually. And I do not want to have a whole bunch of stuff I'm going to have to cut out later. Because that's no fun when it comes to editing. Of course, I'll just break this crate, jump on the TNT so it can blow up, and that should take care of the other ones, which, yep, it does. And now we only got two crates left over here. I would wait until they blow up first before you just hop on the thing, because sometimes it won't count. So that's what I'd like to do. So there we go, got all 12 crates in this one. So now we're at 40 out of 86. So we're almost at the halfway point for crates. Gotta wait for these platforms to become visible. Jump. And up here, we're actually getting close to our first colored gem. If you look on this right-hand side, it tells you a little hint of how you would go about doing it. So first, let's break this. And over here, once it starts, hop over here, 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 here. Here, here, there, here, in the middle, and there goes the first colored gem, and I'm going to ignore those boxes so I can get it. So let's go ahead and waken the first mask. And of course, as is traditional with most Crash Bandicoot levels, we're going to have a runaway stage where we need to run away from the bad guy that is chasing us. While, oop, get this. Do not want to forget that. And run away from the bad guys as we head towards the end goal. So for the most part, I, I dislike these stages so much when it comes to doing these ones just because it's so hectic. Because I don't like not seeing where I'm going, but it's a bit manageable in this game. Of course, there's going to be obstacles everywhere to kind of hinder us as we're making our way towards the exit. But as long as you keep spinning and like looking out for where things are coming during the end, it should be fine. Gotta wait here for the rope. Then jump off. Also, another thing that they added that they didn't do in the other one, when you're jumping, you can actually see a little- Who? No, that was close. You could actually see a little um, reticle at the bottom of you, so you actually know where you're going to land. And I feel like that's going to be a big help, too, for anyone who's, like, trying to keep up to where they're going. And 82 out of 86, that's mostly because I missed the ones towards the end. But hey, at least we got the colored gem, and we did not die again. So that's the first gem, Ruby Red. So literally, we almost got all of them again, too. And we got the reality-shattering proportions by beating the first mass. <laughs> No, 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 no way! Not in a million years! Get him off, get him off, get him off! Hush! Who is that? Lonnie Loli? If the quantum mask have returned, then... Hey, Aku, how's it going? Is that a quantum rift? It appears to be a door between dimensions. Yes, yes, the kind we keep shut. We have to go through, find my siblings, and fix this before some putz with a big evil plan and a bigger ego does something monumentally stupid. Uh. Uka Uka unknowingly paved the way for our bright future. Once my rift generator is complete, dominion over all of time and space will be within our grasp! Engine, Embryo, you had some little projects you wanted to tell me about? Master, my mechanical marvel will hypnotize you and I. And my potion will make me and them unstoppable. Right, you're fine, sure. Have fun with your ray guns or whatever. <laughs> 
Ah. Hasten your steps. By my calculations, our enemies are already moving against us. And we will prevail. Alright, so we actually get to see the main villains once again and get the setup for our little adventure that we have. So this time around, we're going to need to collect the four quantum masks in order to fix whatever is going on that Entropy has planned for us. But that is going to be something we are going to continue on in the next one. So thank you guys for watching this first episode of Let's Play Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. And in the next video, we'll be moving on to the next world that we actually have access to now that we have the Dimensional Rifts opening it up for us. And of course, I'm going to be playing as someone else instead, just because in this game, there's actually going to be four playable characters. Um, the first two, of course, is Crash, and if you hit Square, you get to play as Coco. So, that's who I'm going to be playing with for probably a majority of the game, honestly. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. So as always, if you guys like the video, give the video a like, leave a comment, all those good things to say at the end of the videos, and I will see you guys in the next one. So, until then, take care, everyone.